Now, if you love your comedy, I'm sure you'll be familiar with the name Juliet Burton. If not, I can't wait to introduce you because I think you and her are really going to get on. She's from our neck of the woods and she's up in Edinburgh at a fringe festival at the moment. And Louise and I are both big fans of her work, challenging us to rethink the labels we are given and give ourselves encouraging kindness and being very honest too about her own mental health struggles. I caught up with her earlier this week. Juliet, how's Edinburgh treating you? Oh, it's just phenomenal. I can't, I can't tell you exactly how amazing it is to be back. Um, I sold out like four years in a row before the um, the global thing that happened, and this is the first time in four years that I've been back, and it's just amazing. Sold out a whole run so far, and extra shows added, amazing reviews. I'm pinching myself to be honest. It's wonderful. It looks like people really have taken you to their hearts and they've given you the most warm welcome back you could possibly have. Yeah, they really have. And that's the thing. You can have all the awards and all the sellout um, years and all of the laurels, all of the great reviews that you could wish for but none of that means anything without audiences if if i don't have an audience then it's just me alone in a dark room and nobody <laughs> wants that trust me i love my audiences so much and um that's the whole vibe in the rooms is that the audience is my hero and uh, all of them every single one of them they are the reason that i've sold out before they're the reason that i keep showing up to shows they're the reason that i keep going because there have been times in my life when yeah maybe i've struggled to find a purpose struggled to know why we should put one foot in front of the other audiences connecting with other people is just it's it's my reason i, I and i love it so much i wasn't entirely sure whether they would still be there and it turns out not only are they there but um they they want to connect and i feel like that's that's the main thing my favorite place in edinburgh apart from being on stage making people laugh is after the show in the bar chatting to people and it's just been amazing to reconnect and you really can tell in your work that you seriously do care about the people who come and see you you care about the people who pay the money and and get the tickets what's this year's show about this year's show is, it's called Juliet Burton No Brainer, um, and it's all about how our brains work, or in my case, sometimes don't. Um, over the, the few years that we've all experienced some rough times in the last few years, um, I, I kind of found my brain broke a little bit. Um, and I'm not unfamiliar with my brain not working entirely perfectly in the past. I've had some times, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a second, that um, perhaps I've not been the most uh, au fait with my brain. Um, but in the last few years, uh, I really struggled again, and other people got into Wordle and Banana Bread. I got into neuroscience. I decided I needed to uh, figure out why my brain works a little bit differently to other people's. Uh, and so I created a comedy show about it because that's pretty much what I do with anything in my life. Um, sometimes I think that we get, when we go through really dark times, the only way that I've found to survive it is to is to find the fun in it, to find the funny, uh, and that's a way of finding the light in the darkness. So, uh, this year's show has a lot of um, uh, a lot to learn in it, but you won't notice that you're learning because you're going to be laughing so much. And honestly, as I've said, I I wasn't sure in the last few years whether. Uh, I was even going to be able to make it back to Edinburgh Fringe, back to my tribe, back to the source, the place that I feel like I make the most sense. And I'm, now I'm back. As much as I'm loving the fact that we're doing so well with, with sales and reviews, just being here is enough. So finding the fun every time I get on stage is is just a blessing. It's it, it's a complete joy. Um, and I'm yeah emotional every single day thinking about where I was a few years ago and not being sure if this would happen again. And it's happening in a brand new way, it seems. I can't tell you how refreshing it is to hear someone speak about their own struggles. I mean, you haven't had the easiest time with your mental health. As you say, you and I both share the OCD label, but you managed to talk <laughs> about your struggles and make it relatable in a way that I really don't think I could. How, how on earth do you do it? Um, well, I don't think I 
cannot do it I think I have to do it um for me it's it, I'm not ashamed of my mental health uh, experiences because we all have mental health just like we all have physical health mm. some of us develop short-term mental health conditions that we um, make a full recovery from with proper treatment and diagnosis um, some of us develop longer term uh, conditions just like we develop longer term physical health conditions and some of us like me um, we might be born with or we might develop very early on in life a physical health condition uh, or a mental health condition that we then uh, live with and learn to manage uh, for the rest of our life again it's just like physical health so I have I don't see any shame in it at all and there's nothing to be scared of I am who I am because of and in spite of my mental health lived experiences I also learned in my 20s um, that the best way to get my friends to listen to the slightly more unusual or acute experiences that I've lived through um the best way to do that was to make them laugh because if they're laughing then they know that i'm not looking for their pity mm. there's nothing to be scared of it breaks the tension and classically in society we still have this kind of hangover from years ago when uh, the idea of insanity the idea to, of losing your mind was something to be frightened of and i think that's why doing doing something like edinburgh fringe creating um, art out of, um, and I do count comedy as art, I just put that out there, um, I think creating something out of the, the ever so slight element of madness that all of us have, yes. um, I think is 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 vital, it's, and it's something that I have to do, um, and I love doing it, because it turns out that if we're laughing together, we feel less alone, it breaks down barriers, it increases understanding, and the number of people that come up to me after my shows, having laughed with me about my experiences, then it gives them permission to be more open about their experiences. It's like a little internal massage, being able to laugh in a room full of strangers about similar experiences. Um, and yeah, so I, I guess my experiences include being diagnosed with 15 different mental health conditions, um, being in and out of hospital uh, five times, uh, being in therapy for over 20 years now and being sectioned under the Mental Health Act when I was 17. So I've had quite a lot of experiences that perhaps other people haven't experienced. Um, but for me, that just means that I get to um, already view the rest of society from a sort of a different vantage point. I'm slightly on the outskirts and I'm looking in and I'm questioning constantly, well, what is considered uh, sane or insane and what is considered funny or unfunny? What is considered socially acceptable or socially unacceptable? And for me, being amongst my comedy brothers and sisters, my f comedy siblings up here, uh, creating shows and sharing it with the world, sharing it with the, the audience, Scott Festival, it it constantly is that dialogue um, with audiences, with each other, with with our community about all of these big big topics. But it's that wonderful conversation is happening just in the split second of a of a joke, and it's wonderful. It's amazing the way that you can provide that advocacy for people through comedy. I mean, what sort of reaction do you get from your audience? I remember a couple of years back, maybe more now, at the end of one of your shows, you asked people to go away and perform a random act of kindness. Did you actually get to hear back from people and hear what people did? Do you get that sort of reaction? Yes, absolutely. So um, all of my shows tend to have a, a call to action um, because I think that for me, my I like to, I love creating comedy, but I also love to uh, inspire people. And I, I say that in the in the proper sense of the word. There's lots of comedians who perhaps have uh, dif different uh, experiences of um, physical disability or mental illness. Um, but for me, I, I've I've heard so many people call us inspiring. Right, I've been called inspiring. But, but you are. In, <laughs> well, but I challenge that. I don't think I am inspiring because I think that puts us in a slightly different um, them versus us uh, mm. situation. So you can have the them versus us of, um, oh, we'll look at uh, the, um, to use some slightly uh, um, controversial terms, but that the older terms. Um, the lunatics in the asylum and it would be people paying to go to view the lunatics in the asylum as some sort of entertainment um, if you put people who talk openly about mental illness in an entertaining way into the inspiring category then it then elevates them to some sort of other realm of them versus us and yeah. i think it's important that we level this out we are equal in our experiences of how incredibly weird it is to be human and how incredibly weird it is to process all of the information that was given it's it's a bizarre journey to you know have elbows and eyebrows and just to be alive it's such 
a, a unique and strange journey that we're all on. Um, some of us might uh, experience things a little uh, differently to others, and that might develop into a mental health condition. Um, but I don't think, when I come back to the term inspiring, I don't feel that inspiring means anything unless it inspires people to action, yes. right? So I think it's about what if people say you're inspiring, great, what have I inspired you to do today? What have I inspired you to change your perspective on? Like, let's actually move the conversation forward. Let's have that wonderful ball of energy that can that can be instilled in people in uh, a comedy audience in a theater and use that energy to to change and shift the world right so yeah a few years ago i did do a show uh, all about the power that small acts of kindness can have um i did it for a few reasons uh, one of which be was because i met a guy when i was flyering in edinburgh um, one year who then came to see my show the following year as well as that year and uh, said that he, the day that i'd flyered him i'd chatted to him and recommended other shows and he said it felt like the first act of kindness he'd been shown in a really long time and he said that that day before that meeting he'd been planning to take his own life and i had no idea about that that was a small act of kindness of just having a friendly conversation with somebody and he said he came to see the show um but he felt obligated to come see the show that's his direct quote which that's how i get people to set out my shows with me i, I guilt trip them clearly uh but he comes to see the show he then said he found the show so uplifting he changed his mind that is better than any comedy award or five star yeah. review although i'm not going to turn down any comedy awards and five star reviews that inspired me to write a show about powers of, of kindness and yes lots of people to answer your question came to that show uh, it went on tour and loads of people contacted me telling me about the random acts of kindness that they've done um and i've kept all of them printed out i've got them uh, at home uh, i'm ready to to make them into some sort of book uh, i can't wait to share with people and of course if you are struggling there's always a samaritan say so 116123 there's a bbc action line as well there's always somebody to talk to and there's a chance to be that person for someone else as well as you were just describing You'd think after a busy Edinburgh Fringe, it'd be time for a break for you, but I hear you're off on tour now, including a date down in London. More details on your website, Juliet. Yes, they're all there. Um, yes, London is going to be Greenwich Theatre on the 17th of September, and I believe that's the closest one to Cambridgeshire. There's Luton as well, and Swindon, and uh, Bridgewater, and Halifax, and all over the place. So uh, do check out my website, julietburton.co.uk forward slash shows, if you want to go straight to the page with all of them listed on. Uh, but I would absolutely love to see people in Greenwich because it's a week before my birthday and we are going to have drinks after the show. <laughs> oh, lovely. And if you fancy taking some cake down, well, you, you know where she's going to be. JulietBurton.co.uk for more details. Juliet, really do appreciate you chatting to us this morning. Thank you so much. It's been a lovely, lovely time chatting with you and I hope everyone in Cambridgeshire is doing very well.